All right, let me make sure we're recording. All right, guys, let's get started with our morning routine here. Um, we've got some gratitude that we rolled through in the chat box. I appreciate that. Very exciting news, Laura Goolsby. I think you take the cake on that one today. Her father's PET scan came back cancer-free, and that is hugely awesome. Um, speaking of cancer, to update you guys on my mom, I appreciate you guys so much for reaching out and asking how she's doing. Um, I think my mom is hands down the toughest woman on the planet. Um, I might be biased, but that's what I think. Um, she had her surgery two weeks ago today, actually, and um, she met with her oncologist in like a telemed thing yesterday. And um, we're waiting on one more pathology report to determine the actual origin or the mutation of the cancer. Um, kind of a unique situation, and I'll kind of move on after this, but it's just very interesting. The cancer actually has been in her system for nine years. It's um, a cell that came off of her um, colon cancer, and it had laid dormant in her system for nine years, and then it just recently decided to attack her ovary and develop into ovarian cancer. So it's very unique, interesting um, situation. They had a bunch of... Um, oncologists review it and they had four or five opinions on it, but it was a very interesting and unique situation that they said they have never seen um, something quite like it. So it's good. All the cancer is gone. Um, at least that we know of, she's also going to have a PET scan and she'll have six months to 12 months of chemotherapy every other week. And we'll know more about that in um, the days to come when they get that pathology report back. So thank you very much for all your support, prayers and love um, and asking me how she's doing. She's doing great. And, um, I'm very inspired by her. So if anybody ever needs an inspiration, I'll give you my mom's phone number. She is your go-to. So thank you guys very much. All right, let's get rolling with some birthdays. We've got two birthdays coming up. Tomorrow is Dubose Cuthbert's birthday. Um, that's very exciting. We were just talking about how Dubose dives for shark teeth. So hopefully he's got something fun planned in that realm for his birthday. And then also on June 18th is Alexis Martinez's birthday. So happy birthday to you two. Hope you have a good day. Also upcoming, we've got today Lion Desk 101 training. That's our CRM, as you all know. On Monday, we've got our Java with Johns. Just keep in mind that we're only doing that on Mondays now. We were doing it on Mondays and Fridays, and now we're only doing it on Mondays. And then on the 15th as well, we have a foundations class for mastering the buyer interview. And then on the 16th, um, from two to three, adding links to your Gmail signature, which is definitely something you want to do. Think buy side. That would be a really good spot to put your buy side link. And then as well on the 17th, Mastery, of course, on that Wednesday. And then another Foundations class for Mastering the Open House. Remember, these are all virtual. We're virtual until probably um, mid or early July. So everything is virtual that we do until then. Also, today, we announced this last week. I hope that some of you guys will take the time out of your day today and go pop in over to Awandaw Village. Um, you guys know John Sweeney and Rob Benware. They're in our office very frequently. They are having an event on um, from 1 to 5 and then also 2 to 4. So you can go any of those times. Um, and that's from um, out in Awanda at Awanda Village. That's the address. I'll send this out to you guys in an email. I'm not positive I'm going to be able to get out there today, but I really hope that we can show them some support and actually check out Awanda Village. It's a really, really cool, unique little spot and they've got really beautiful houses for a really good price. So check them out today if you've got some time. All right, moving forward to our partners. I know we've got Abby Robertson with us this morning, so we're going to hear from her in a second. But a quick reminder on insurance. Hurricane season is upon us, so don't forget that is very, very important, especially for um, when you have buyers that are under contract. They need to bind their insurance early on in the process because if we get a named storm, we can't bind insurance and it could delay closing. And SAS has seen that a couple of times. So insurance checkups, definitely relevant to review your current coverage with your agent for your own personal property. Understand what your deductibles are. Video your personal property. It's always good to take an inventory list as well of what you have. That's one of those things that you wish you did after the fact. So it's always good to be prepared. Secure all the documents and video in a safe place or with you. Take it with you if you um, have to... Um, leave, what do, what do we call that? Evacuate. 
<laughs> and also consider flood insurance even if you're not in a flood zone. It's affordable, it's silly not to have, and don't forget about that umbrella coverage as well. So if you need questions or um, have questions about that or you need some advice or guidance, reach out to one of the guys on SAS's team, either Ashley um, or um, Greg are usually our go-to guys. So keep that in mind. Also with us this morning, we've got Abby Robertson. She's been at our office a couple times, but wanted to reintroduce her to you guys. Abby graduated, she did her undergrad at Furman and then got her law degree at Georgia Law. And she's got some slides for us that she's gonna run us through to remind us what she does with Weeks and Irvin and make sure that we know we have her as a resource for estate planning and all that stuff. So Abby, what you got for us? Abby, I think you're muted. Maybe. <laughs> Let's see, let's see. We might, um, we can try coming back to you, Abby. If I see you, but I can't hear you. All right, Abby, throw something up in the chat box when you've got it working and um, we'll come back to you at the, at the end or toward the middle. All right. All right, so our guest who, this is exciting and I know that you guys did that feedback for me yesterday and um, and, oh, it's auto-muting you. I'm not sure why. Try logging out, Abby, and um, log back in and see if that helps. All right, so our guest who, I appreciate the feedback you guys gave us in that survey yesterday. A lot of you guys said that you love the guest who and that feature of the sales meeting. I think you will find this one exciting this week. And let's see what our facts are for our agent that you've got to guess. So throw it in the chat box if you know who this is. This agent won homecoming queen my senior year in high school. Once saw 22 outdoor concerts in one summer, traveled Australia for two weeks and got to hang with koalas and kangaroos in the wild. I've traveled through every state but four in the United States. I played and beat Tyrone Muggsy Bogues in one-on-one -on -one in basketball. Muggsy Bogues used to be my favorite basketball player. I don't even really know how to play basketball, but I love Muggsy Bogues for some reason. All right, so who is this agent? One homecoming queen my senior year in high school, saw 22 outdoor concerts in one summer, traveled Australia for two weeks and got to hang out with some koalas and kangaroos in the wild, have traveled through every state but four in the United States, played basketball and beat Bugsy Bogues in a one-on-one -on -one basketball game. Put it up in that chat box and you guys let me know if you can guess who that is. Winner gets three open house signs. All right, production. I might be biased, but I think you guys are kicking butt. And in case you didn't see, we've got another record-breaking week in MLS history. I'm sure Dave will touch on that here shortly. I put that gorilla gif up just for him because it's his favorite. Um, but it's very exciting to see we've got a lot of production happening. So, so far for the month of May, listing sales and closing. Actually, this is supposed to say June, sorry. Um, eight listings for 4.4 million, average price of 552. 31 sales for 11.2 million, average price of 364, and 17 closings for 7.8 million, average price of 460. Lots of people to highlight so far, kicking butt in June. We've got Katrina Johnson with three, Carolyn Parsons with two, Chip Idolit, Elizabeth Murphy with two, the Leap Rand team with two, Laura Goolsby with two, Doug Getford, Alex Tereg is kicking butt with five. That's awesome, girl. Poppy team with three, the Rini Kramer team with four, Carrie Walker with three, the Fessler team three, Lauren Zarillo at two, Whitley Boyd, Tina Campbell Byers, John Graham, Ashley Marsh, Shelby Hillel, Nancy Carroll Crick, Lance Morrison, Pam Bishop with four, the Northrop team, the Ritter group with three, Elsie Spencer, Wells Grimble, Thorne Cathcart, the Simply Southern group, Tina Hartford, Mary Maloney, Stephen Hudako, and Tyler Davidson. Awesome stuff, guys. Very exciting work. Well done. Again, I had mentioned it a minute ago, but we had the best week ever in MLS history. Don't be uninspired by that. If you are not on that board and you don't have a piece of the pie yet, let me help you. I'm not going to let you give up, but I want to help you capitalize on the opportunities that are in our market right now. So lean on me. Let me help you. That's what I'm here for. And that's what I love doing. If you want to set up a mid-year review, let's do that too. Um, but you have opportunities. We've just got to start capitalizing on them. So if you're not on the board, Get yourself in a position where you can be inspired between the space you are at right now and where you want to be, and let's make it work. So congratulations to everybody else who's got some stuff going on. All right, some important members. 
memo, excuse me, don't forget about social distancing. I know it sounds silly to repeat it, and I know it's stuff that we hear all day long everywhere we go, but it's really, really important, and it's really hard to kind of remember. I know it sounds ridiculous, but when you're doing open houses and somebody walks in, your natural instinct is to shake their hand. Um, probably not a good idea. We probably shouldn't be doing that. So be smart, be safe, and remember that just because it doesn't bother you, that doesn't mean it doesn't bother somebody else. And you can guarantee it's like kind of like politics. No matter what the room population is, half the people in the room are going to be bothered and half aren't. So we're doing our best to manage all of that. We know that we've got the COVID page on Rose right now. Um, so you can refer to that to see office closures or updated information. Um, very grateful that we have that resource. But just be mindful and just keep going with what you're doing with caution. All right. Also, digital real estate tip of the week. We're going to try to start sending this out. I just think some little subtle reminders are good for this stuff. We're in a new world, so we got to figure out new ways to do things and we've got to evolve. Don't forget that we have digital listing and buyer presentations that you can use online. You can put them on your website. You can do social media pages, your blog page, whatever. It also can be put in a link format and you can text it out to somebody. So if you meet somebody or you're talking to somebody on Facebook or something and they are interested in buying, you can say, hey, here, review my buyer's guide. Go to this link and review my buyer guide. And it takes two seconds to do. The buyer guide is a free service. It's already on Rose. You just have to go look for it. And then the listing guide is personalized to you. And you can make it personalized to a certain area of town. Or you can just leave it generic. But it's customized to you. And that one's $20 a year, which is silly cheap. So I've got a YouTube um, tutorial on how to find that on Rose. And I will send that out to you guys later this afternoon. But just be aware, you don't have to worry about dropping off a pre-listing packet or something when we have the digital one that you can offer people. So definitely a new way to do things. And we've got to keep evolving in this way. So don't forget about that resource. Also, you saw an email come out from marketing. Um, show your patriotism. Independence Day is coming up, obviously, on July 4th. The office will be closed on July 3rd, which is Friday. So just be mindful of that. But um, don't forget to order your flags. I do this every year in the neighborhood not for any other purpose to other than just to make the neighborhood look great, but it's really nice and neighbors really, really appreciate it. So you can get your flags. They come with um, business cards that say something like have a safe and happy 4th of July or something like that and has your information on it. What I used to do is just take a ribbon and tie it to the um, flag and stick it in the ground. So prices are on there. Order them as soon as you can because they are limited supply and we probably run out. So make sure you've got that in your list of things to do today. All right, you saw me post this out on social media. This is not because we like to be the police of social media. This is because the LLR license law requires us to advertise in a certain way. So I've talked to a few of you guys and I'm trying to catch them all before we get nailed, but your business Facebook page and your Instagram page must identify you as a Carolina One agent. And the reason why in two different spots, you either have to have it in your name where it says Maggie McDuffie Real Estate at the top where my name goes, or it has to be in the about section. A lot of people have been putting um, the Carolina One logo in their banner, the image in their banner, and that's not good enough because when I go to my mobile site and I'm a customer and I'm scrolling through, I'm not going to click on your banner picture. But the first thing I'll see is your name and then the about section. And I'll be able to identify quickly that you're with Carolina One. So we really need to get on top of that. Every post you do must also identify you as a Carolina One agent. So I've emailed a few of you guys when I see it. Um, Philip's really been helpful to also send them to me when he sees them. Megan Moody has also done that. So we just want to get ahead of it. We're a big company and we're an easy target. And we don't need any of us getting in trouble or getting our hands slapped because we're not advertising properly. So please help me out with that and um, make sure that we're compliant so we don't get in trouble. All right, the activity contest. We've been rolling around 20% participation on this, which is exciting. Um, so... I just want you guys to kind of be mindful. Every Wednesday, I'm sending you an email just to remind you to update your activity contest um, results. I have a PDF of the activity contest report card that I can email out again if you need it. But a lot of people think it's easier to just write it down as you go throughout the week and then on Wednesday, update it. Um, you can update on Wednesday or Thursday. And Thursday at noon, it's going to switch. The report card that you click on the link will switch to the new week. So just be mindful of that. It's really easy to do, guys. This stuff is just silly, silly stuff that makes a huge difference. It's easy to do and it's easy not to do. The interesting part that I want to keep reminding you is that 
people who are making over $20 million in gross commission income throughout the country are using this system. So we know that it works. I mean, can you imagine $20 million in GCI? That's insane. So if we could just do a fraction of the activities, it would have a big impact, not only on our income and our personal lives, but on the people who are helping. And that's what we're here to do, right? Making a difference. So keep it in mind and do the stuff, unless you have a better plan, which I don't know that we do. All right, also show your local support, encourage participation. I made this last week and I will try to do one every month when the gifts come out. Um, but I know I saw a couple of you using it on social media, which really excited me. And I saw Meredith um, Coughlin's this morning and she had like three or four people who said, oh, add me to the list, add me to the list. So it's definitely a way to attract more people to you. And it's a great time to be supporting your local community and local businesses. So those get released at noon today. So after the meeting, if you want to make any adjustments to the message that goes out, or if you want to switch people to put them in different zones, you can do that too. So if you need help with that, call us. We'll help you. They go out at noon. So if you do nothing, they're all going to go out to the people that you have designated in the, each area. Um, and that's okay. You don't have to change anything. But I like to go in there and I like to say, oh, yeah, you know, these people who I have designated for West Ashley have three kids and they would probably love mini golf, but they also probably want the dessert to have a date night. So I'm going to send them both. And you can do that. So if you need help with that, let me know. Anna, Tony, and I can help. All right. Speaking of the activity contest, those slides were a little backwards. This morning, I am giving away three $25 marketing gift cards to Kristen Ackerman for perfect attendance all three weeks. She's usually the first one to sign in to um, update her activities. Doug Getford also has had perfect attendance all three weeks, been playing. And Paul Lynch, highest score this week. All awesome stuff. So you're all getting a $25 marketing gift card. See me and pick it up at the office or I can send it to you. But there's a lot of good stuff in that marketing store if you haven't been there. So congratulations to you guys and thanks for playing. Another reminder on this, and then we're going to switch back to Abby and see if we can get her to unmute um, her system there. But just a quick reminder from marketing. Um, I know a lot of you guys have used this last week. I think they're still running the um, $99 specials for the month of June, but it's a video advertisement on social media. You have to be signed up for C180, but this is a great way to refresh listings that have been kind of sitting for a little while. So keep that in mind. It's 99 bucks. It's silly not to do. It's just another thing you can say to your clients, hey, I know that we're struggling. We don't have any showings this week, but guess what I just did? I did a video ad. It's going to go out to 12,000 to 14,000 impressions. It's going to run for a week. Let me know if you see it. Let me know if you have any questions. It's just a nice extra ad to get the exposure for your listings. All right, Abby, let's see if you can unmute. Hopefully. I know you're here. Oh, dang. <clears throat> All right. I don't know why we can't hear you, Abby. I hate it. I'll run through what you've got, though, Abby. Um, Abby does estate planning for Weeks and Urban. Um, she sets up wills, trusts, general um, powers of attorney, that sort of thing. She also helps can help you through probate and um, quiet title actions. So keep that stuff in mind. It's inexpensive to do estate planning, but it's really, really, really important. Um, she's a great resource for us and also our clients. And she's always available. So reach out to Abby if you have questions about estate planning or probate or any of that kind of stuff. And Abby, just keep trying to unmute. And if we can get to you, we will. But thanks for being here. All right, moving forward. Andrew and Sherilyn, what you got for us this morning? Good morning. All right. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Uh, the first, are you... <laughs> The first thing, Sherilyn, <laughs> my partner, joining in right there. All right. We're going to talk. So Palmetto Heroes, you guys may have seen. Um, and thank you, Paul Lynch, for sending me the uh, the link, actually. But there was a news uh, article yesterday sent out by the Post and Courier um, regarding the Palmetto Heroes program with, South, uh, with the South Carolina Housing Authority. They released their funds yesterday, or the day before yesterday, actually. Um, and this is for, you can go ahead and go to the next slide. Thank you. This is the down payment assistance program that's called state housing. 
it doesn't affect us in Mount Pleasant as much as it, it probably used to, or that it affects like Somerville and the outer line areas. Uh, but this is down payment assistance for first time home buyers. But the Palmetto Heroes program is specific, a specific bond issuance for uh, certain people, which I'll get to in just a moment. Uh, but typically it's your first, your first responders uh, and so forth. EMTs, things like that. First, um, go back real quick. Oh, sorry. It's ten thousand dollars in this. Thank you. It's ten thousand dollars in assistance for down payment and closing costs, and it's a forgivable second, which is either spread out over ten years or twenty years. All right, and there is no payment on the second mortgage, so it's it's basically a grant, a silent second that it requires payoff if the property is sold before the term of the forgivable period is up. All right, go ahead and go to the next one. So here's where the rub is. This is the difference this year. Typically it's t teachers, law enforcement, firefighters, EMTs and paramedics and so forth, and veterans of course. Uh, but they have since because of COVID this year in this bond issuance included medical professionals, so meaning medical staff administration, grocery store employees and delivery drivers. We haven't gotten full guidance on what that means yet, right? Because there are gonna be certain, uh, I mean, what does delivery driver mean? There's, that's pretty wide swath of, uh, of what that could mean. So we're going to get some, a little bit further guidance on that. Go ahead and go to the next one. Uh, but the rate is, it's a set rate for as long as the bond uh, funds are available. And it is first come, first serve. There are income limits on it based on the term of the forgivable second. The income limit, if it's a 10-year forgivable, is 64800 If they use a 20-year forgivable term, it's 81000 the look at what the cap on the sales price limit is though. So if they use the 10 year, it's a $225,000 purchase price limit. And on the 20 year forgivable, it's 300,000 as a purchase price limit. So again, it's not gonna affect Mount Pleasant as much, uh, but it could be good for, for outer lying areas and especially in some of the upper coming areas that, like out in Monk's Corner, Fort Monk's Corner and so forth. Um, go ahead and go to the next slide. This is what's important. The funding is very limited. It is an annual bond issuance, and it's a bond that is issued directly from the South Carolina Housing Authority. It's how they actually make their money and, and get the funds to be able to do these loans. Um, it's first come, first serve, and they run out very, very quickly, particularly on the Palmetto Heroes portion, uh, because it's not as big of a bond as the general overall state housing program is typically. Uh, last year, when that was issued, it ran out in late July because of the additional people that are going to be allowed to use this program and utilize this this year. It's expected to go much, much quicker. Um, if you have any questions, type them in the in the box and we'll try to hit them, answer them after this. So this is I want to talk to you guys about some of the headlines and so forth that are going on right now uh, based on a conversation that I've had a couple of conversations I've actually had with um, Chair Lane, my boss, even Maggie, just in, in passing. Um, but the headlines out there right now, in spite of all of the stuff that are going on, as far as real estate and mortgage is concerned, is wildly phenomenal. <laughs> it is, we've seen how good the, the stats are for our local market, particularly, which to me says we are primed and poised in the best position, probably of anywhere in the country because of what we have here to offer, and especially coming out of COVID. Who does not want to wake up to come out of isolation to go to the beach, right? <laughs> um, anyhow, look at some of these headlines right here. These are, those headlines, go back just one second. These headlines are actually from yesterday. These are all from one day's headlines yesterday on Mortgage News Daily. All right, quarantines lift, mortgage volume explodes. That's true. But this one right here is my favorite one. Main Street optimism picks up as pent up demand lifts outlook. The reason that that's important is because the demand never left, right? The demand was still there even through COVID and even through furloughs and everything like that. All of the underlying fundamentals of the economy were still strong enough that once the COVID stuff was ending, it should start bringing all this pent up demand back. This little quote right here at the bottom I wanted to point out because it's talking, this is from the head of the uh, economic and industry forecasting. There was a reduction in supply across all loan types driven by further pullback in investor appetites for loan, pro loan programs with low credit scores and high loan to values. 
Credit tightening was observed at both ends of the market with less av availability of low down payment programs designed for first time home buyers, as well as for conforming and non-conforming jumbo loans. So the reason I read that is in contrast to what these other headlines are up here and how busy the market is, even as busy as it is right now, because some of these programs were temporarily cut during the COVID, there's even further pent up demand on top of the demand that we're already seeing because when as these programs come back it's going to open up a whole another set of buyers that were uh, that are sitting on the sidelines right now right so we the point with all this go ahead and go to the next slide is the conversation that i was having with uh trip yesterday our assistant manager and that i've had with Sherilyn before is that the difference between this go around in 2008 what happened in 2008 is that the mortgage market and real estate were part of the cause of what was going on during that time. This time we are leading the way back out, right? Mortgage, the mortgage market right now and the real estate market are gangbusters. And again, particularly so here in Charleston and in the low country. And that is such an amazing thing that we get the opportunity this time to be the ones that get to solve the problem, and help lead out rather than being the whipping boy of the cause of the problem <laughs> uh, as it was in 08 and 09. <laughs> All right. That's very true, Andrew. It's good information. Go ahead, share land with the rates and thank yous. Okay, guys. I really am not just copying the same rates from the last four <laughs> weeks. Um, I, I, I looked at them yesterday. I'm like, I didn't change. I only changed the home ready. It went up an eighth, I guess, because it's a lower down payment like Andrew is just referring to. Sometimes they ha are, are happier to lend on just a 3% down and sometimes the investors aren't. But everything else, y'all, is exactly the same. So, which is a good thing. If the market is low like this, it's a great thing for our, for our buyers out there. Go ahead to the next slide, Maggie. Oh, gosh, you guys, we have been so busy and we really, really um, appreciate everything. We've had closings in the last week with the Ritter Group and Jeff Burns. Thank you guys for your business. We appreciate it. And then, um, oh man, Carrie Walker, the Fessler team, John Graham, Rene Kramer team, Tina Byers, y'all are burning it up. And we are working on multiples uh, with Carrie and Tina and Fessler. So keep them coming, keep them coming. We got a lot of capacity and we really appreciate your help. And we're always here for you. I want to thank Ann Wise, Ashley Marsh, Charla McDonald, Dominique House, uh, Jeannie XL, John Graham, the Rene Kramer team, Stephen Hudako, and Tina Hartford. We have pre-approved borrowers for them, this buyers for them this very week. So get out there and sell them a house. And Alex Teregas, Katha Remington, Dominique, Leslie Evans, Melissa Loy, Pam Bishop, Paul Lynch, and the Poppy team have all reached out to us to see if we can help them or their buyers or sellers with any financing information. Thanks for asking us. We're happy to be a part of the team. Have awesome. a great week. Yep. Thank you guys very much. I'm going to go back here and read this, um, this uh, testimonial that we got earlier in the week, which was awesome. It says Tina Hartford was beyond helpful, full of knowledge and on top of everything. Sherilyn Doherty was amazing and so professional and cheerful. They are a great team and I'm very thankful that we chose them. Beth Nixon was also extremely helpful and organized. Sarah Cody was getting things done. And overall, we couldn't have asked for anything more. I would definitely recommend Tina Hartford to anyone as well as Sherilyn Doherty. Thank you. Thank you. Nice. Very, very nice. Great work, guys. That is the power of teamwork. All right, let's hear from some of our rock stars. We've got some new listings. First up, we've got Chip Idolit on um, 1217 Myrick. Tell us what you got here, Chip. Chipper, I know you're here. I just saw you. All right, well, he's got 1217 Myrick Road, three bedrooms, two and a half bath, 1994 square feet in Avian Park, listed at 567. Looks like it's got some nice upgrades there. Um, reach out to Chip if you've got somebody interested in that kind of property. All right, also with us with a new listing, we've got Goolsby. I know you're on the line. What you got, girl? Good morning. Um, just listed. 1204 Cutler Lane in Hamlin Plantation. And it's just 
almost pristine. It's lightly lived in. A couple has owned it for 13 years. So they were the second owners and the floors are just beautiful. And um, anyway, um, 3189 square feet and um, immaculate outside and inside. Please bring your buyers. Awesome. Very nice. Great curb appeal too. All right, the Simply Southern group, we've got um, Lynn and Rebecca Sosa. I know that one of you is here. Want to tell us about 1608 Crossville Trail? Maybe they're both not here. <laughs> All right, well, Crossville Trail, this is in Tanner Plantation up in Hanahan. Nice, even 300,000. It's a four bedroom, two and a half bath, 2,000 square foot house. Looks like they've done some cool things to that kitchen island. You see that little detail work there. That looks pretty neat. So nice little house. Reach out to um, Rebecca Sosa or Lynn Snyder if you've got somebody looking at 300,000 in the Hanahan area. Excuse me. <clears throat> Doug Getford, are you on the line? You want to tell us about Tranquility Lane? Where's all my people this morning? Out doing business, I assume, right? All right, well, we've got 162 Tranquility Lane, five bedrooms, three and a half bath, 2172 square feet in the hammock, 675, just listed by um, Doug Getford. So reach out to him. I'm not sure where the hammocks is, but it looks like it's on one of the islands. Kelly Neely, are you here? Tell us about Top Sail Court. All right. 1345 Top Sail Court, four bedroom, three and a half bath, 3225 square feet in Hidden Lakes. We all know where that one is in Mount Pleasant, listed at 770. Looks like it's got a nice yard with a good little view there. I know that um, Kathy Remington was showing it yesterday, so hopefully we've got some stuff on that one going already. Um, Abby, I see your message there. Got to run. Sorry, guys. I'm always available directly if you have any questions regarding estate planning. We appreciate you being here, Abby. Sorry we couldn't get to hear you, but we appreciate you dialing in. Reach out to Abby at Weeks and Urban if you need any of that stuff, guys. All right, Bob and Sherry, tell us about this listing that we viewed right before COVID started and refresh our memory. These guys. <laughs> Where is everybody this morning? I think we're all having technical challenges this morning. 3834. What is that, Fifle Street, Mount Pleasant? This one's listed at 850. If you remember, it's in pristine condition. We looked at it right before um, COVID started and they asked if they could mention it just to refresh our memories on it. Um, it has a ton of upgrades. I remember walking through there and thinking that I was gonna make things dirty because it was so clean. Um, really nice backyard with that fireplace and the little waterfall feature. Master bedroom is downstairs and it's got that cool upstairs with a couple different flex spaces up there. So if you've got somebody looking at 850 um, in Carolina Park, uh, reach out to Bob and Sherry Offer. And then I know that Andrea Rose Rousseau is looking for space in Mount Pleasant South, Mount Pleasant South for a vet office. Um, lease or purchase can be a house, something commercial-ish. Um, so keep that in mind for her. And if we have any other have wants and needs before we switch over and hear from Dave Sansom, Unmute your mic and tell us what you need in terms of have wants and needs. Going once. Nobody wants to talk today. Hey, Maggie. Yeah. Greg. Hey, morning. Can you hear me? Hey, I just want to, uh, Abby and I uh, met with a, a couple last night and we're getting ready to list their house on its. It says Goose Creek on the address, but it's actually Hanahan Schools. It's like right at one of those. It's right across the line off Foster Creek Road. So it's uh, think of Tanner Hall, but uh, I mean Tanner Plantation, but it's right next door. Uh, we're going to list that for 305, uh, and it's going to be active in MLS next Wednesday. It's about 20, almost 2,200 square feet. It's three bedrooms plus a bonus room, two car garage, uh, about 20 years old, and. Uh, Anyway, it's, uh, it, there's not much inventory over there in the Hanahan School District in that price range. Awesome. Yeah, good, great yes. listing, sounds like. Maggie. Yes. This is Bob. I'm sorry. We 
technology challenged here. Yeah, that, this <laughs> listing is probably the cleanest home. These are two IT people. I mean, one thing it's got is a, a whole house generator. I mean, it is tricked out to, to everything. So it is move in ready. Um, they're very flexible as when to close. <laughs> I'm sorry I interrupted. I just, we just got our speaker, couldn't get the microphone on. Thank you. That's right. Please consider you showing it. It is, it is pristine. <laughs> Thank you. Good to hear from you guys. Okay. Maggie. Yes. What you got, Maggie? Well, I am going to be listing a house in Oak Creek, up in Goose Creek. It's a cute little house. It's about 1,400 square feet. It's going to be about 200,000. She has had it with two or three other realtors, and they have not marketed it very well. So we'll have to get out there and sell it. It's a great investment, great rental. Also, I listed Kiowa River Estates lot, is, and that's lovely. That beautiful um, subdivision. So if you're interested in that, just give me a call. I can give you the gate code. Awesome. Sounds like some good stuff. I know that um, Whitley has mentioned in the chat box there, she has two needs in West Ashley, if we've got anything, um, between 250 and 350. And the other um, one for a small family and the other would like an Airbnb potential property. So keep that in mind and reach out to Wit if you've got anything coming up. Maggie. All right, guys. Uh, we... Yeah, Maggie. Jason. Hey. Oh, hey. Um, I, I just signed a, a listing agreement <clears throat> for downtown on, on the water Murray Boulevard. Uh, 14 Murray is the first time it's been available. Um, in over 30 years, I believe. Um, but uh, view of Fort Sumter and all that stuff. Um, we're going to list it probably next week or two weeks from now. Um, 2.895 if anybody's going to buy with some money, honey. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one, Jason. Jason worked really hard on getting that listing, guys. Um, they were trying to go FISBO and they were really working him pretty hard on it. So that's a huge win. So congratulations to you, Jason. Way to hold your ground and stay persistent. Good stuff. Okay, I got a, I'm gonna piggyback on Jason. Yes. This is, uh, Lisa Mikichi, Will and I have our listing downtown. So if you're going to see Jason's house, please come see ours on Atlantic Street because it's, uh, it's a great uh, emergence on the market. Five bedrooms, four and a half baths, and it's 2.85. Just a little bit under 5,000 square feet. Awesome. That's another one that uh, Mikichis have been working very hard on for a couple of years. So let's try to get some buyers in that $3 million -ish price range and get these two sold for our team. That's awesome stuff, guys. Thank you all. All right, I'm gonna ask Fessler to share a story before we hear from Dave, um, real quick story about the um, stats and how he has been using the information that Dave has been sending out. And then we're gonna hear from Dave. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay, so first thing I wanted to say is, uh, Greg Fessler is not the poster child for always staying in good flow with people. So <laughs> this, is, this story is not because we always get it right, but with Abby helping me, uh, we've done better about staying in touch with people and, and that kind of thing. So um, just the Clifton version is basically we just uh, decided when all this stay at home stuff crap started that we were just going to kind of do the best we could every day to just kind of stay in touch with people, reach out, send them text messages and whatever we could do like we're supposed to do. Right. And um, so one of the mess this was right after I think the first week that Dave sent out one of these um one of the graphs just indicating the, the demand and the number of homes that were still going under contract um, <clears throat> and the really high numbers, excuse me. So we, we sent that to some people and uh, one of those clients sent me a message back and said something along the lines of, we're gonna wait until, uh, we're gonna wait for the prices to drop and then buy. So we just kind of did a little probing and trying to figure out where they were coming from. And they were convinced completely that because their, uh, their stock portfolio had dropped a little bit, that we were headed for the same kind of sort of drop in the market values like 
we saw in 2007 to 2009, which for those of you that were around was not much fun. So, but they were completely convinced that's where we were all headed. And um, so we just kind of acknowledged their their concern and because obviously we didn't know, you know, we, we were only seeing what we were seeing right in front of us at the time and nobody really had any crystal ball about what the future held in terms of prices. But, um, you know, it just didn't look that way to us. It looked like it was a pretty solid foundation that we were continuing to build on. So, um, and the great thing is Dave does such a great job of keeping us informed with the, with the graph. So the next week we had another graph and it was just as good, if not better. So we sent that to them. And after the third week in a row of them getting those graphs and they were asking us about where the information comes from. And we just, we talked a little bit about that. And then the next thing you know, they wanted to see a couple houses that were in this neighborhood that they had really been interested in for a long time, but could never bring themselves to sort of pull the trigger. But because of the graphs that, that Dave was generating, um, you know, that's really what got this over the hump. So that's the whole point of the story was I was just sharing that with Dave and with, with Maggie that um, the, the graphs is really what did it, is the people being able to see the numbers and it's not just us telling them, and uh, I was just telling them what the, what we think or our feelings, but it's actually letting them see the numbers and just saying, you know, this is what's going on and this is what's forecast to go on. And um, so that got them over the hump and we're now under contract in a, in a really nice neighborhood um, and even using uh, Carolina One Mortgage. So it's it's been great. That's awesome. You know, I think sometimes, thank you for sharing that, Greg. And I think sometimes it's easy to, um, receive all the information that we have and then not do anything with it. Um, but this is a true testament of if we've got the resources and we have the information, let's leverage it to our advantage and share it. That's why we have it. So one one part of it is to inform us and keep us educated, but the other part is to do something with it, right? So great example of that. And thank you for sharing, Greg. That's awesome. And congratulations on the sale. Very cool. All right, let's hear from Dave Sansom, our CFO, COO. Hopefully your microphone works, Dave. <laughs> uh, we'll try it. Uh, can you guys hear me? Yeah. Okay, great. Um, we, we have recently moved to uh, Olanda, and we, while we have internet, it is sometimes a little spotty on these meetings, so hopefully the audio will hold up. Um, a, uh, a couple of things to mention before we get into the complacency conversation. One, just uh, uh, regarding the market, I am hoping to have a uh, updated email out with those graphs on it either today or tomorrow. Uh, as Maggie mentioned earlier in the meeting, uh, last week was the new best week uh, that our MLS has ever had. Uh, it's the first time there's been more than 500, 500 properties go under contract in a week, uh, and there were 525. Uh, so that makes the, uh, uh, five, the last five weeks or individually, any one of those five weeks would have been the best week ever prior to this five week span. And then um, going, uh, uh, obviously then collectively, the five weeks, uh, best five week span that we've ever had. Um, the last thing I would say to that, you know, Andrew put up some good, yep, that's exactly where I was gonna go, Elizabeth Murphy's question. Um, I would tell you what I, re my real answer to that question, if we were allowed to use bad words on these meetings, as far as why the Post and Courier headline, uh, yesterday was down 22%. So on in one of the emails, that, and I was going exactly to that to that headline. Um, in one of my emails in mid May, I said, "Okay, be ready for the negative housing headlines coming in early June, uh, because the dip in uh, uh, written sales, the written sales dip that that came from COVID, occurred in April." Well, when would April contracts typically close? May. And the MLS, uh, CTAR and the MLS release sales data on June 10th, so, uh, on the 10th of every month. So right around the 10th of June, I knew we could expect, from the middle of May, I knew we could expect a negative housing headline from the Post and Courier around June 10th. And I mentioned that exactly in one of uh, in one of my emails, and it's because they're watching what is, for all intents and purposes, a lagging indicator. So there's a difference between a lead indicator and a lag indicator. A lag indicator is the last thing that occurs. A lead indicator would be the first thing that occurs. The lead indicator is written sales. Written sales tell you what the market is doing right now. 
uh, closings tell you what consumer sentiment and the market was doing 30, 45, 60 days ago. So uh, if you watch closings, which is what the Post and Courier typically does, uh, and most, most media outlets, what you're really finding out about is what happened 30, 45, 60 days ago in the housing market. That's why all the emails that I send out are, are geared towards ratified contracts, because that is the most recent indicator of what is happening that we can track. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think that's good Good to point out. And that's even more so, Dave, why everybody needs to be pushing out their, their inform, the information that we get to kind of combat that kind of stuff. Well, and, and, and we had exactly the reverse. It's just crazy to me after years and years and years of watching this. It's, it's just that, that somebody there, despite conversations with them, and we've had them, hasn't figured this out. And they're by no means the only media outlet that, that blows things from time to time. They just happen to be the one that we deal with. The um, uh, I guess it would have been in the beginning of May when uh, the COVID thing really had had taken hold and gotten going. We actually had a really good closing month in April because that was reflective of March and February written contracts. So the headlines in the uh, in the the beginning of of May were very positive when what was actually happening, the ratified contracts, were very, very negative. And so it's, it's just, it, it's tough, it's frustrating, but after, if you know what to look for, you can totally predict it and be ready to address it with your clients. Going once, going twice on that. I wasn't reading the comment box. I'll just go through that real quick. Uh, how do I explain that to our sphere in an easy way? Um, I, there's an email. I'd have to check which date it is. Hold on. I'll check it while we're on here. Um, it's an all core. Bear with me. It's an all core that I sent on May 19th points four, five, and six in the all core on May 19th address exactly this conversation. Hopefully that is helpful. And that was from me. I'm coming back to the meeting page now, forgive me. Okay, uh, moving on to the second uh, topic. Um, COVID, uh, I just wanna address that briefly. I thought Maggie did a nice job early on. Uh, I do want to underscore, and Maggie mentioned it, I wanna uh, underscore the importance of going to the company page uh, on ROWS. That is the primary um, method that we plan on communicating positive cases and or office closures. Uh, I've had a few people, probably four or five, ask why we're not doing all core emails on those. Uh, and there's um, uh, a couple of reasons. One is, you know, unfortunately, this is probably going to happen a lot. Uh, you know, we're nowhere near out of the, being out of the woods on COVID. And, um, you know, the number of cases continues to rise. There's a real good shot. We'll see a much bigger wave in the fall. Uh, and if this, you know, we're a company of, if you count employees, 11, 1,200 people, you know, if five or 600 of us get this, uh, or all of us, um, we really don't want to send five, 600, a thousand all core emails uh, about COVID um, and about positive tests. Uh, the second thing is people miss our all core emails. Uh, so if we have the information in one central repository uh, where everybody knows the information is up to date and they can go check it, um, then, you know, that, that simplifies things, I think, uh, for everybody. Um, there is a uh, additional uh, confirmed positive test at Mount Pleasant North. Um, that test came in last night, uh, and uh, that's probably in the last two weeks or so. Um, office Mount Pleasant North is closed today. We have a call in about 20, 25 minutes to talk about um, you know what we're what else we're going to do there because we've had a few different cleaning methods and a couple of more extended closures there. Uh, and so far that doesn't seem to have uh, uh, done the trick. So we, we probably got to take some additional measures. Anyway, you know what, um, what, what there is to know on that topic for this morning. Um, moving to uh, the slide that is up there, complacency. Um, I just wanted to talk about this for a minute and let me give you the background on, on, uh, on this. So, um, 
when the vision group people came a few years ago, that's a group of other uh, real estate people that lead other real estate companies. We go around and look at each other's companies and, and, you know, dig into their books and talk to their people uh, and about, and, and give, then give recommendations based on, on uh, what we saw when we were talking with them. And um, the, uh, our turn to be visited, you get visited about once every 10 years, our turn to be visited was roughly uh, two years ago. And uh, in one of the more interesting parts of that process is uh, you have to, when, when they give you their feedback, you have to sit there and take notes. You're not allowed to say anything. You're not allowed to justify things that they criticize. Uh, you, have to be, you have to be quiet. And people that run real estate companies are generally not, or companies of any kind, are generally not wallflowers uh, that, that just sit quietly and attentively and listen all the time. They tend to have opinions and they tend to want to share them. So that was, it was very interesting to sit through that and not be able to say anything. Uh, but a word they used two or three times uh, to describe us, uh, and th this was, uh, you know, not said in an uncomplimentary way. This was said, you know, at the end of a long string of really positive statements, but they said our one warning to you is complacency. Our one warning to you as a company is complacency because when you're on top, when you are number one, and when you're number one, by as far as you are in your market, um, and very few companies that are number one, number one by more than maybe one point of market share, um, if that, to be number one by triple the closest company uh, is, is highly unusual. And so it just, it's super easy to be complacent. Don't become complacent. Challenge everything that you do. Uh, and we've gotten much better at that over the last couple of years. Certainly not perfect. Um, switching stories for a moment, uh, but sticking with the bring this bringing this to the point. Um, uh, probably about a year ago, last summer, uh, my wife and I were out for dinner, and uh, we ran into one of our agents who was having dinner with a client. It was a post closing celebratory dinner, uh, and this client turns out to have been a Navy SEAL, uh, and um, he now is out of the service and working as a consultant for a company that does uh, leadership consulting, all ex-military special operators, mostly SEALs, uh, does consulting for, for companies around the country. Um, I should have known they would be out of our price range when he told me who he was working with. That was uh, the Atlanta Falcons, the San Francisco 49ers, um, Samsung and Southwest. Uh, but uh, since he's living in town, got a meeting with him anyway to see if maybe he could help us with a leadership retreat. Um, there were two problems. One, he was about 10 times what we were willing to pay. Uh, so even if we'd have been able to cut his price in half, it would have been five times what we were willing to pay. Uh, and the second problem was that uh, the, the list of questions on his questionnaire included um, your choice of wake up times for your team of 4.35 or 5.30 in the morning. Uh, and then he wanted to know how many um, logs uh, and of what size we would need for our team. So I think it was going to involve carrying logs around, which some members of our team would probably be um, not super predisposed to do. Anyway, I've wound up on their uh, weekly emailing list, and they send out different messages about once a week. Yeah, I knew Maggie would be in. You and John Grisillo were about the only two that I felt like were were, were uh, likely to agree to participate in that, Maggie. Um, <laughs> So the, the message they sent, it's brief, that they sent on Tuesday, uh, I think applies to complacency and also applies to coming out of a COVID world. Uh, and I'm just gonna, I'm gonna read it here quickly. Uh, for those of you that don't know, in the Navy SEALs, the trident is a, a, a little um, uh, symbol that they earn that's pinned on their chest when they complete um, SEAL training and actually become an official SEAL. So the, the, the name of the message is earn your trident every day. This is the saying in the team basis. It means maintaining readiness, projecting power, keeping the legend alive, even when, especially when you don't feel up to it. Sure, there are guys that do impressive work, but even when you take a breather to pat yourself on the back, it's important to remember that there are no free passes. If you want to set the standard for others to follow, if you want to be admired by peers, appreciated by superiors and glowing with the self-satisfaction of performing up to your potential, then you've got to pay your dues and the invoice is due every single day. On top of that, surround yourself with like-minded people that will hold you accountable 
and will expect you to do the same. Now you are generating exponential impact. No doubt about it, we are living in strange days. For a lot of people, that means hunker down and wait for normal. Newsflash, normal has left the building. The world outside your door has evolved and your approach must evolve. Someone is going to be at the top of the new food chain and that spot is and has always been reserved for those who earn it. So get out there and do it today because the world needs hitters. And I don't really know why he uses the word hitters, but obviously he means performers. Um, so I, I, number one, that addressed in my mind the idea of complacency for you as agents, for us as a company, uh, with the idea that who cares if we were number one last year, if we were number one for the last 20 years. It doesn't matter if we're not number one this year and if we're not number one next year. Uh, and we have to do a we have to do a lot to to stay out in front of that. The other the other part uh, that that spoke to me was the idea of surrounding yourself with like minded people who will hold you accountable uh, and expect you to do the same with them. Uh, to me, that is one of the great values of a company like Carolina One and an office like Long Point, uh, where you have very strong leader uh, who is no uh, no stranger to accountability herself. So. Um, uh, that's, that's a really important thing. Uh, it, it is interesting to me how many agents, experienced agents we recruit from other companies who um, were maybe the top producer at their company or the number two producer at their company. And they come to us and they're, they're you know, maybe upper middle of the pack uh, or on the lower end of the top of the pack. And a consistent statement from them is something like, I don't know that I really understood what was possible before. Uh, and, and that is a, a, a really powerful thing that is hard to uh, articulate, hard to make people understand until they experience it. And those people who are out there leading uh, doing a great job will make you better just by setting the example. And then you in turn make others better by following the example of, of, uh, of the top folks. So th there was a lot in that message. That was a lot of talking. Uh, but uh, it, it really spoke to me, and I wanted to take a moment to share it this morning. I appreciate it, Dave. Um, you know, I think we did a survey yesterday that we sent out to the office, and Anna, Tony, and I are going to meet after the meeting to kind of review all the feedback, um, just talking about what has changed that agents are enjoying and what the differences are and now, how we operate and all that, and what we can keep doing, what we shouldn't do, what we should change, all that. And one of the num overwhelmingly um, prominent responses is that everybody misses the interaction with each other. So we've got to get, um, we've got to get a creative in how we get back that culture and that um, connectedness to be surrounded by each other because it, it really does have a powerful impact on performance when we're all together and you've got people who will hold you accountable and help you through struggles and all that sort of thing. That's one of our greatest advantages as a company and as an office. So I agree. Um, Maggie, I want to throw one other thought out there. I meant to say this in the market piece, just in the idea of how predictable this stuff is. So if uh, May written contracts were the uh, best month of written contracts ever, what can we probably guess about June closings? I mean, Maggie, we're going to have, have a lot. <laughs> yeah, probably a record month, which means that the July 10 headline is probably going to be pretty good. So I can tell you what the J July 10 headline is on May 31st and so on and so on and so on. Um, so it, it's it, just watch that indicator and think of it in those terms and you'll be able to explain a lot to your people about why what we what is happening in the market today is maybe a little different than the headlines. Yeah, it's a good heads up and it's a way for us to get ahead of it. So thanks for that reminder too. And also, don't yeah. forget, guys, June is my birthday month, so I would appreciate all of the closings in the month of June. And don't forget, it's the last day of June, so just reminding you guys. <laughs> all right, anybody have any questions for Dave? Anything that we need to ask him or anything um, on your mind that you want to share with him? <laughs> I'm never subtle about my birthday, Lance. Come on now. <laughs> All right, we are going to, um, thank you for being with us, Dave. I appreciate that. And it's nice to kind of have a, a different perspective, not just stats, but kind of some inspirational message from you as well. So thank you. All right, we're going to roll to our guess who and wrap up our meeting for the morning so you can all get on with your day. 
So put it in the chat box again if you know who this is. Our facts. This agent says, I won homecoming queen my senior year in high school. Saw 22 outdoor concerts in one summer. Traveled to Australia for two weeks and got to hang with koalas and kangaroos in the wild. Has traveled through every state but four in the United States. That's a lot. And played and beat Muggsy Bogues in a one-on-one -on -one basketball game. All right, so we've got Elsie. We've got um, Lance. Who else we got as guesses? It is not Elsie. It is not Lance. It's not Tina. Ha ha. It is not Whitley. <laughs> you guys guess Whitley every single week. It is not Laura. It is not Katrina. It's not Lauren. And it's not me. It is Reveal Yourself, Mystery Agent. Good morning, Maggie. This is Digit. Oh, Digit, you little homecoming queen. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I did. On that. I uh, so they they did a homecoming court for our spirit week, and the basketball team dressed as the court, and the cheerleaders dressed as the escorts, and I won with a pretty uh, lavender ensemble with some highlights <laughs> in my hair. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> I bet that lavender brought out your eyes. It did. That's how I won. <laughs> and tell us about the Muggsy Bogues basketball. So also as a senior, I was at a basketball camp and Muggsy came, he was at Wake Forest and I came, he came to do a demonstration on point guards and ask if anybody wanted to play. And at the time he was playing for the Charlotte Hornets and I stood up and said, I'll play you. And we played to 11 and I beat him 11 to five. Wow. That is awesome. Yeah. How old is Muggsy Bogues? He's not still playing basketball, right? No, he's retired. He's been retired for a while. Um, he just got put into the Wake Hall of Fame, and I think he's maybe two years older than me, so that's 55, I think. That is awesome. Very, very cool. Yeah. It's kind of interesting because when Digit sent these um, fun facts back, I was like, there is literally not one person who's going to guess Digit, and I don't think any of you guys got Digit. Actually, I was <laughs> watching, and Stephen Hudaku said it, and then Madison put it in as laughing at the fact that he did it, so Stephen got uh. it. Steven's the winner for this week. Yeah. <laughs> that is awesome. Carrie Walker, are you missing a space bar? I mean, all your messages are all one word. Anyway, well, that's awesome. Thanks for playing Digit. Cool to know a little bit more about you other than the fact that you hunt and kill animals. We love having all that information. That's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome stuff. Well, thanks for being here, guys. Also, um, stay on the line if you want for virtual prayer room. If you're interested, I appreciate you guys being here. It is 10.07. I hope you've got somebody awesome to help today. That is your question for the day. Who can you help today? Whose day can you make a little bit brighter? I hope you have a great day. Enjoy the rest of the week. Let's finish it strong and have an awesome weekend. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Maggie. Bye. Thank you. I wasn't sure. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Dave. Thanks, Maggie. Thanks, everyone. See ya. I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to make it or not, so I didn't think it out. So, where, are, where are you, Laura? Hey, can you see me? I don't know that you really don't need to see me. Alex is driving.